Today marks 23 years since legendary singer-songwriter John Denver died in a plane crash in Pacific Grove. On October 12, 1997, John Denver was super excited to fly his new plane. But at 5.28 in the evening, something went really wrong. People on the ground saw his plane suddenly tilt to the right and then dive nose first. What went wrong at the last minute? Denver was flying a homemade plane, practicing landings and takeoffs at the Monterey Airport, and was just offshore when he ran out of fuel. Join us to find out what exactly went wrong as we walk you through the terrifying last minutes of John Denver in the horrible crash. Who is John Denver? In the enchanting realm of folk and country melodies, John Denver, born Henry John Deutschendorf Jr. on December 31, 1943, was a highly acclaimed American singer-songwriter. Born in Roswell, New Mexico, Denver's artistic journey began at the young age of 11 when he received his grandmother's guitar. His father, Lieutenant Colonel Henry John Deutschendorf Sr., was a U.S. Air Force officer, which exposed Denver to a life of travel and exploration. When uh, I was 13 years old and we moved from Tucson, Arizona to Montgomery, Alabama, and uh, I was there for one year and then we moved to Fort Worth, Texas. John Denver illuminated the musical landscape like a dazzling star, captivating audiences worldwide with his heartfelt tunes and poignant lyrics. His contributions to music were not just fleeting moments of brilliance, but rather a legacy that continues to shape the genre to this day. However, amidst the grandeur of his success, tragedy struck, casting a shadow over his luminous life. Imagine this, an idyllic October day, the calm cockpit of a small private aircraft soaring gracefully above a picturesque landscape. Here sat John Denver, the virtuoso behind timeless classics such as Take Me Home, Country Roads, Firmly in Control. His passion for aviation rivaled his fervor for music, blending seamlessly as he navigated between the skies and the stage. But fate, it seemed, had a different script to follow. As we delve deeper into the extraordinary life of John Denver, we uncover a narrative teeming with melody, adventure, and ultimately, heartbreak. Despite his meteoric rise in the music industry, Denver found solace and exhilaration in the boundless expanse of the sky. Yet it was during one fateful flight that the harmony of his life was abruptly interrupted. On that ill-fated day, etched into history as October 12, 1997, off the coast of California, John Denver, an accomplished pilot, took to the skies in his experimental Rutan Long Easy aircraft. However, amidst the flight, a sequence of events unfolded, culminating in a tragic crash into the Pacific Ocean. Subsequent investigations revealed a probable cause. Denver's struggle to switch fuel tanks effectively, leading to a catastrophic loss of engine power. The repercussions of this catastrophic event rippled across the music world, leaving fans and fellow artists mourning the loss of a true icon. John Denver's legacy transcends mere melodies. It's an enduring imprint on those touched by his music and spirit. Denver was a passionate advocate for environmental and humanitarian causes. He co-founded the Windstar Foundation to champion wildlife and land conservation. His 20-year involvement with UNICEF showcased his dedication to fighting hunger and poverty. An experienced pilot trained by his father, Denver's love for flying became a recurring theme in his music. So as we reminisce about the life of John Denver, let us not merely recall him as a radiant luminary of folk and country music, but also as a dauntless explorer whose journey, though shortened, continues to inspire and resonate with generations to come. Early Life John Denver's formative years were shaped by the constant relocations typical of Air Force families. His father, Henry Deutschendorf Sr., was a U.S. Air Force pilot and flight instructor, instilling in John a love of flying from a young age. The constant change of scenery presented challenges for young John, making it difficult to form lasting friendships. However, music emerged as a constant source of solace and connection. A pivotal moment arrived at the age of 11 when John received a gift from his grandmother that would spark his musical journey, an antique Gibson guitar. This ignited a passion for music, leading him to perform with local groups during his high school years in California and Texas. Despite his natural musical talent, high school proved to be a tumultuous time for John, and by his junior year, he made a bold move, driven by his strong desire to pursue music full-time. He ran away to California. 
His father, unsurprisingly, was not thrilled with this decision. John Sr., leveraging his pilot skills, flew to California and brought his son back to Texas to finish high school. John, however, never abandoned his musical aspirations. Following graduation, he enrolled at Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas to study architecture. However, music continued to be his true calling. He joined a folk group called the Alpine Trio during this period, and the experience solidified his desire to become a professional musician. Musical Beginnings from Air Force to Songwriter. Is that something new? Oh, yeah, I was, uh, I was just jamming with Bill and Taffy last week after, after the show. It's, it's a little something they've been working on. John Denver emerged into the world against the dynamic backdrop of a nomadic Air Force family, a circumstance that would profoundly shape his early years. He was a folk and country music icon whose heartfelt melodies and insightful lyrics resonated with millions across the globe. From one corner of the country to another, Denver's childhood was characterized by a perpetual journey, a mosaic of diverse cultures and landscapes that provided the canvas for his burgeoning creativity. Amidst this whirlwind of change, however, there existed a steadfast refuge in the form of his grandmother's farm in Oklahoma. The serenity of his grandmother's farm, nestled amidst the sprawling fields and endless skies of Oklahoma, offered John Denver more than just a place of respite. It served as the crucible where his love for the soul-stirring melodies of classic country music was forged. Each note that resonated through the air left an indelible imprint on his young spirit, shaping his musical sensibilities in profound ways. At the impressionable age of 11, serendipity intersected with destiny in the form of a cherished gift from his grandmother, an antique Gibson guitar. This instrument, with its weathered wood and taut strings, proved to be more than just a tangible object. It was the catalyst that ignited John's passion for music. With each chord struck and every melody woven, he found solace, expression, and a profound sense of belonging. Music ceased to be a mere hobby. It became the very essence of his being, a conduit through which he could articulate his deepest emotions and connect with the world around him. Yet as he navigated the tumultuous waters of adolescence and high school, John Denver encountered his fair share of obstacles. Despite the allure of California and its promise of artistic freedom, his dreams were momentarily deferred when his father intervened, redirecting him back to Texas to complete his education. However, this detour proved to be but a temporary setback in Denver's journey toward musical fulfillment and self-discovery. His career. Amidst the labyrinth of academia, John found solace in the harmonious notes that danced through his soul. Even as he delved into the world of architecture at Texas Tech University, his heart remained tethered to the melody that whispered of his true calling. Within this academic landscape, he stumbled upon the Alpine Trio, a musical enclave that became the crucible for his burgeoning talent. Here, amidst the rigors of academia, John discovered a sanctuary where his musical spirit could flourish. Yet, it was the siren call of Los Angeles that truly beckoned to him, its vibrant music scene pulsating with a rhythm that resonated with his very essence. The decision to diverge from the well-worn path of academia in favor of the uncertain yet beguiling realm of music marked a pivotal moment in John's life. In the bustling streets of L.A., his star began its meteoric rise. Within the eclectic tapestry of artists and dreamers that populated Los Angeles, John Denver found his place. Here, he honed his craft with an intensity fueled by passion and determination, weaving together lyrics and melodies that would soon enrapture audiences across the globe. His journey from the windswept plains of Oklahoma to the sun-kissed shores of California transcended mere geography. It was a symphony of self-discovery, resilience, and unyielding passion. As John Denver's narrative unfolded, it became clear that his story was not just one of geographical relocation, but a testament to the power of following one's dreams against all odds. It was a narrative that resonated with millions, inspiring them to embrace their own passions and forge their own paths, no matter how uncertain the journey may seem. In the chronicles of daring exploits, there exists a figure whose very essence embodies the audacious spirit of adventure, John. His life pulsated with an unyielding zeal, propelling him to remarkable heights, quite literally. As a seasoned private pilot, 
John charted the skies with finesse, amassing an impressive tally of over 2,700 hours airborne. Each hour spent aloft was a testament to his unwavering commitment to the skies, a realm where he felt most alive. However, the dawn of the 1980s marked a pivotal juncture in John's journey. In a captivating metamorphosis, he steered his course towards a road less traversed, one of advocacy and activism. Amidst the lyrical melodies of his music, John discovered a potent platform for his environmental crusade. His lyrics transcended mere words. They metamorphosed into powerful messages, echoing the urgent need for the preservation of our precious planet. Through his music, John became a beacon of change, inspiring multitudes to embrace a more sustainable lifestyle. Each note he struck reverberated with the call to action, stirring hearts and minds alike to join the noble cause of safeguarding our environment for generations to come. John's journey stands as a testament to the transformative power of passion and purpose. From the boundless skies to the resonating chords of his music, he continues to chart a course toward a future where harmony between humanity and nature prevails. From folk star to environmental activist, a musical journey. John's musical talent continued to blossom, and his skills as a singer and songwriter soon attracted attention. He began booking gigs at local clubs and honing his craft. A pivotal moment in his career arrived in 1966 when he wrote the now iconic song, Leaving on a Jet Plane, during a particularly lonely layover at an airport. The song, originally intended for himself, was ultimately recorded by the folk group Peter, Paul, and Mary, becoming a massive hit in 1969 and propelling John into the national spotlight. Following this initial success, John signed a recording contract and adopted the stage name John Denver in 1969. The 1970s marked a golden age for John Denver's musical career. He released a string of highly successful albums, including Take Me Home, Country Roads, 1971, Annie's Song, 1970, and Thank God I'm a Country Boy, 1974. These songs, with their relatable lyrics and catchy melodies, resonated with a broad audience and cemented John Denver's place as a folk and country music icon. Beyond his musical success, John Denver emerged as a voice for environmental activism. His love for nature and the environment found expression in his music, with songs like Rocky Mountain High, 1972, becoming anthems for the conservation movement. He also incorporated environmental messages into other songs, such as Whose Garden Was This, 1971, written by Tom Paxton. John Denver's commitment to environmental causes extended beyond music. He actively participated in environmental campaigns and even pursued training for space travel with NASA, harboring a dream of writing a song from space to raise awareness about the importance of protecting our planet. Ah, the timeless melody of Leaving on a Jet Plane by the legendary folk trio Peter, Paul, and Mary. It's one of those tunes that seems to etch itself into your soul. But here's a delightful twist for you. Did you know that this iconic song was actually crafted by the masterful hands of none other than John Denver himself? Picture this, a poignant layover, perhaps with the distant hum of jet engines as a backdrop. And there he was, John Denver penning down the lyrics that would resonate through generations. But what sets Denver apart wasn't just his thirst for adventure. It was his profound love affair with airplanes. This wasn't merely a fleeting fancy for him. It was a love so deep it would come to define both his personal and professional odysseys. Throughout his illustrious career, Denver's music became the canvas upon which he painted his passion for flight and the boundless freedom it represented. Each chord, each lyric, carried the weight of his longing for the skies. And leaving on a jet plane was perhaps the pinnacle of this expression, a beautiful synthesis of his love for airplanes and his undeniable talent for music. But the story doesn't end there. Denver's legacy extends far beyond his music. It's etched in the hearts of those who dare to dream and those who find solace in the endless expanse of the sky. So the next time you find yourself humming along to that familiar tune, Remember the man behind the melody, a man whose love for airplanes soared as high as his music. As leaving on a jet plane soared to the top of the charts, John Denver's star began its meteoric rise. The song, penned by Denver in 1966 during a layover at Washington International Airport,
captured the poignant essence of departure and the bittersweet emotions that accompany farewells. Denver's heartfelt lyrics and soulful melody struck a universal chord with audiences worldwide, propelling him into the stratosphere of musical stardom and solidifying his indelible place in the annals of music history. Yet John Denver's legacy extends far beyond the resounding success of leaving on a jet plane. With a name inspired by the majestic landscapes of his cherished Colorado, Denver's music often served as a sonic homage to the rugged beauty of the Rockies. Hits like Take Me Home, Country Roads, and Rocky Mountain High became anthems for an entire generation, eliciting a profound sense of nostalgia and belonging that transcended geographical boundaries. Throughout his illustrious career, John Denver's music functioned as a poignant love letter to nature, adventure, and the simple joys of life. His soul-stirring voice and poignant lyrics resonated deeply with listeners, serving as a timeless reminder of the profound power of music to inspire, uplift, and unite us all. This captivating narrative of Denver's journey underscores the enduring impact of his musical oeuvre, which continues to captivate audiences worldwide, reaffirming his status as a beloved icon of folk and country music. A passion for flight and a fatal accident, soaring high and a tragic end. In the annals of human ambition, few stories resonate with the sheer audacity and determination as that of John a visionary whose aspirations reached beyond the confines of our terrestrial realm. John's fervent desire to explore the cosmos was not merely a fleeting fancy, but a palpable yearning, a dream so close that one could almost touch the stars. However, fate, with its capricious hand, intervened, altering the trajectory of John's celestial journey. Despite being on the cusp of embarking on a space expedition, John was met with the harsh reality of rejection. The bitter sting of this setback could have been crushing, yet in a twist of providence, it spared him from the tragic fate that befell the Challenger space shuttle in 1986. John's odyssey encapsulates the essence of the human spirit, indomitable, resilient, and relentless in its pursuit of the extraordinary. His legacy stands as a beacon of inspiration, a testament to the unwavering power of passion and perseverance in the face of adversity. Through his story, he beckons to all, urging them to defy boundaries, to embrace the unknown, and to reach for the stars, both figuratively and literally. As we gaze up at the night sky, let us not only marvel at the vast expanse of the cosmos, but also remember the spirit of John, a reminder that our greatest adventures lie not only in the depths of space, but within the boundless reaches of our own imagination. In the annals of aviation history, John's persona emerges as a figure of daring and audacity, his exploits etched in the skies with the fervor of a true daredevil. His passion for flight knew no boundaries, spanning from breathtaking aerobatics to serene glider flights, each endeavor a testament to his unwavering love for the boundless expanse of the heavens above. John's remarkable journey through the skies took a significant turn in 1997 when he embarked on a new chapter of exploration, an odyssey intertwined with the creation and piloting of a unique home-built aircraft known as the Long EZ. Designed by Bert Rutan, the Long EZ is an experimental aircraft renowned for its efficiency, performance, and distinctive canard configuration. It gained widespread attention for its sleek design and remarkable capabilities, attracting enthusiasts and adventurers alike. As John delved into the world of experimental aviation, he embraced the challenges and thrills of building and flying his Long EZ. Constructed from composite materials such as fiberglass and foam, the aircraft represented a fusion of innovation and craftsmanship, reflecting John's dedication to pushing the boundaries of conventional flight. His piloting escapades with the Long EZ epitomized his adventurous spirit as he soared through the skies with precision and skill. From exhilarating cross-country flights to graceful maneuvers in the air, John showcased the versatility and performance of his home-built aircraft, leaving spectators in awe of his mastery of the skies. Through his passion and determination, John not only left a lasting impact on the world of aviation, but also inspired countless individuals to pursue their dreams of flight. 
His legacy continues to resonate, reminding us of the boundless possibilities that await those who dare to reach for the stars. John Denver's lifelong fascination with flying, nurtured by his father's career, grew into a skilled piloting career. He obtained certifications for various aircraft, including single-engine land, single-engine sea, multi-engine land, and gliders, and even received training to pilot a jet aircraft. John accumulated over 2,700 hours of flight time, a testament to his passion for piloting. However, John Denver's love of flying was marred by a few incidents. In 1993, a drunk driving arrest led to the loss of his medical certificate, a requirement for legal piloting in the United States. John Denver's decision to continue flying without a medical certificate raises questions about his judgment and potential risk-taking behavior. Some speculate that the loss of his medical certificate, coupled with his adventurous spirit, may have influenced his decision to purchase a Long EZ, a home-built aircraft known for its unique and some would say awkward fuel selector valve placement. This valve, positioned over the pilot's left shoulder behind the headrest, required a series of contorted movements to operate, potentially distracting a pilot during critical moments of flight. On October 12, 1997, John Denver took off from the Monterey Peninsula Airport in California for a solo flight in his long EZ. The weather conditions were ideal for flying, with clear skies and gentle winds. However, tragedy struck shortly after takeoff. Witnesses on the ground reported seeing the plane flying at an altitude of approximately 500 feet before it inexplicably nosedived into the Pacific Ocean near Pacific Grove, California. The cause of the crash remained a mystery until the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, launched a full investigation, the investigation and a legacy that endures. The NTSB's investigation into John Denver's fatal crash focused on several key factors. One area of scrutiny was John's past struggles with alcohol, which led to the revocation of his medical certificate. However, blood tests conducted after the crash revealed no presence of drugs or alcohol in his system, effectively ruling out impairment as a contributing factor. The NTSB's investigation ultimately concluded that the most likely cause of the crash was the inconvenient placement of the Long EZ's fuel selector valve. Investigators theorized that John, unable to comfortably reach the valve due to its awkward position, might have accidentally maneuvered the plane into a fatal dive while attempting to switch fuel tanks mid-flight. This theory was supported by interviews with other pilots familiar with the Long EZ, who described the complexity and potential for error associated with operating the fuel selector valve in this particular aircraft model. John Denver's tragic death at the age of 53 sent shockwaves through the music industry and beyond. Despite the circumstances surrounding his final flight, his legacy as a talented musician, passionate environmentalist, and adventurous spirit endures. His music continues to inspire and bring comfort to millions of fans worldwide. A bronze statue stands tall at the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Denver, Colorado, commemorating his contributions as a musician and conservationist. In 2014, John Denver received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a testament to his lasting impact on American culture. John Denver's life story serves as a reminder of the power of music, the importance of environmental protection, and the inherent risks associated with aviation. His legacy continues to inspire generations of musicians, environmental activists, and dreamers who, like John Denver, dared to chase their passions and explore the world with open hearts and soaring spirits. The Untold Story John Denver, the legendary singer whose voice captured the spirit of the American West, perished in a horrific plane crash. While the crash itself is a well-known event, the details leading up to his final moments reveal a more unsettling story. John Denver was known for his love of flying, often incorporating themes of aviation into his music. However, his piloting experience was limited. According to reports, he was undergoing training for a private pilot's license, but hadn't completed the program at the time of the crash. This raises questions about his competency, particularly when piloting a complex aircraft like the one involved. Taste of Country, in their article John Denver's Final Hours Plus His One Fatal Mistake, explores this aspect of the story in more detail. They highlight the importance of proper training and certification, 
especially for pilots of experimental aircraft. John Denver was a passionate aviator, but his piloting expertise was limited. He reportedly underwent training for a private pilot's license, but hadn't completed the program at the time of the crash. This raises questions about his competency to handle a complex aircraft like the one he was piloting. Denver was piloting a Rutan Long EZ, a home-built, single-engine, experimental aircraft. These planes were known for their impressive speed and unique design, but also had a reputation for being difficult to handle, particularly during maneuvers like fuel switching, a crucial factor in the investigation. Denver took off from Monterey Peninsula Airport for a series of touch-and-go landings, a practice maneuver for pilots. Witnesses reported the flight appeared normal until Denver attempted to switch fuel tanks. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB investigation concluded that a loss of control likely occurred during this maneuver, leading to a rapid descent and the fatal crash into Monterey Bay. Several factors add a layer of mystery to Denver's final moments. The NTSB report didn't definitively rule out mechanical failure, although it was deemed unlikely. Additionally, some reports suggest Denver might not have been entirely sober at the time of the flight, though this was never officially confirmed. These lingering questions continue to fuel speculation about the cause of the crash. The tragic loss of John Denver left a void in the music world. His story serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of proper training and adhering to safety protocols when piloting any aircraft, particularly experimental models. A passion for flight and the aircraft in question. A speedy but demanding design, Denver was piloting a Rutan Long EZ, a single-engine, experimental aircraft built from a kit. These planes were known for their impressive speed cruising at speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour and unique canard design, small lifting surface in front of the main wing. However, this design also came with a reputation for being challenging to handle, particularly during maneuvers like fuel switching, a critical factor in the investigation. Air and Space Magazine, in their article, Inside John Denver's Death in a Tragic Plane Crash, details the specific challenges associated with piloting a long EZ. The article discusses the plane's sensitivity to pilot inputs and the potential for control issues if not handled with expertise. The Flight and the Fatal Maneuver On the fateful day, Denver took off from Monterey Peninsula Airport for a series of touch-and-go landings, a practice maneuver for pilots that involves a series of takeoffs and landings without ever leaving the vicinity of the airport. Witnesses reported the flight appeared normal until Denver attempted to switch fuel tanks. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB investigation, concluded that a loss of control likely occurred during this maneuver. The specific cause of the loss of control remains a subject of debate, with theories ranging from a pilot error during the fuel switch to a possible mechanical malfunction. Theories and lingering questions. The NTSB report didn't definitively rule out mechanical failure, although it was deemed unlikely. Additionally, some reports suggest Denver might not have been entirely sober at the time of the flight, though this was never officially confirmed. These lingering questions continue to fuel speculation about the cause of the crash. John Denver's tragic loss left a void in the music industry. His story serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of proper training, adhering to safety protocols, and maintaining a clear focus when piloting any aircraft, particularly experimental models with demanding handling characteristics. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video.